All right, so let's look at some simple examples of one-to-one -one functions and their inverses. Okay? Um, so remember that one-to-one -one means that for any possible inputs, let's say x1 and x2, if f of x1 equals f of x2, then x1 equals x2. Um, and this is a fancy way of saying that you can't have the same input for different outputs, right? So if I have two outputs, or sorry, same output for different inputs, right? If I have two outputs that are the same, then they came from the same input, right? So if we do something like uh, let's say, let's do something simple like a linear function. 3x minus 2. Um, now, you can almost work out what the inverse should be if you just think about, if you think about the function in the sense of it's a rule that tells you how to do something, right? Uh, so what does this function tell you to do? It tells you to take a number, multiply by 3, and then subtract 2. So if you were trying to undo that function, um, just like the undo key if you're working on a word processor or something like that, right? You always undo in the opposite order, right? You undo the most recent thing first. So first thing I'd have to do it, is I'd have to get rid of the minus 2. So I'd have to add 2. That would cancel out the, the fact that I subtracted 2. Um, then to cancel out the fact that I multiplied by 3, I'd have to divide by 3, right? So that tells me that I should be able to reverse this function. The way I confirm is, you know, we say, well, let's suppose, let's suppose that f of x1 does, in fact, equal f of x2 for some x1, x2. Um, well, then 3x1 minus 2 would have to equal 3x2 minus 2. And if I add 2 to both sides, 3x1 would equal 3x2. And I can divide both sides by 3. And I confirm that indeed x1 is equal to x2. All right. Now, how do you, uh, how do you go about finding that inverse? Okay. Um, well, one of the things that you'll notice here is that one of the things that's kind of hiding in this is that this is x, right? So if, if y is equal to f of x, then x is f inverse of y. So what I should really do is let y equal f of x, which is 3x minus 2, then y plus 2 is equal to 3x, and that means that x is equal to y plus 2 over 3, exactly as we said. Um, to reverse this function, we should first add 2 and then divide the result by 3, right? So that means that f inverse of y is y plus 2 over 3. And if you want to write that as a function of x rather than a function of, of y, that's fine. Remember that the, the y is just some dummy variable. It's a placeholder. So if you want to put an x here, just put an x there, and you've got it, right? Um, you can do it that way. OK? I'll, I'll give you one more example. Let's go with um, x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. OK? I'm going to leave it 
as an exercise to confirm that this is indeed a one-to-one -one function. Uh, it's not so bad. There's a little bit of work involved. You got to cross multiply. It's doable. Um, so if we want to find the inverse, let's set that equal to y, right? Set it equal to y. Y is f of x. F inverse of y should be x. So we've got to take this equation, solve for x. So let's see. Um, let's cross multiply. x minus 1 is y times 2x plus 3, which is 2xy plus 3y. OK. Now let's think for a second, what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for x. So let's get everything with an x on one side. x minus 2xy is equal to 3y plus 1. <coughs> OK, so I want to solve for x. Next thing I should do is I should factor an x out from this left-hand side. x times 1 minus 2y is 3y plus 1. And so if I want to solve for x, I just have to divide by 1 minus 2y. So f inverse of y, which is x, is 3y plus 1 over 1 minus 2y. There you have it.